Given all the info we've gathered, the missing... I say, are these bloodstains? Yeah, and they look fresh. I fear the missing girl may somehow figure into this yet. Well, she was last seen with her boyfriend. Maybe he knows some... Watch out the town entrance. Someone about to get the bad touch. for your girlfriend. She's been missing for a few days now. You were the last one to see her before she vanished, right? She... I don't she know what you're your, talking you're about. You're her boyfriend. Aren't you worried about her? She... she Foul creature. We found bloodstains in the very area where the two of you are last seen. <gasps> you can hide nothing from Grimoire Vice. Confess, oh guilty one. Confess and unburden your soul. Confess! Lest others who are not as forgiving as I discover your terrible secret. No, she, she it was an accident. We were arguing over, she pushed me, so I pushed her back. She fell in her. Accident or not, a person died. Trying to cover that up is a serious crime. I knew I couldn't hide forever. I didn't know what to do, so I put the body in the sense, but well, uh, just outside the city. We appreciate the honesty. Oh boy. This must be the sand spout well. This is hardly the most pleasant task. You hmm. How peculiar. Why would he lie about the body and not the murdery bit? Well, I guess we should go... So there was no body to be found. What's going on here? She must have been carried off by the sands. Or the walls. Oh no. It appears to be a... Or perhaps the man was mistaken all along. Yeah. Okay. So each time you get an ending, do you play? It's like a new game plus, and you play through the game a little faster, but there's more to it. Is that how that works? Until you finally get to E, and E's like the true ending. But your boyfriend told us you were... I don't understand a single thing that's happening right now. 
Could the man possibly have been deluding himself this entire time? Ah, The fuck? Okay. Yeah, that quest is uh, surely a head scratcher. Like, what the fuck were they thinking? What? What the hell were they going for with that? So is it like a, do you get like a new game plus in order to try and go and do the other endings or not really? You start over each time. Because that, that would seem counterproductive to what you're trying to do. From a certain moment. Okay. So the, what I'm doing is basically setting up all those other moments right now. Like him, him right now is me setting up everything and getting to know the world enough that I can understand how my changes are significant. I'm trying to wrap my head around what's going on here. <laughs> So we're here. Did somebody order a watermelon? Yay, you're the best. Anything else you need? Actually, I need a pump. All right then, one pumpkin. I got your pump. Thanks. You've sure been eating. Oh, I'm not eating them. You're not? Is she just collecting them? Here you go. I made it all by myself. Is this a cake? Yep. Popola taught me how to bake one. I made it for you in secret. Wow, Yona. This is, um, well, it's a surprise for sure. Yeah. Come on. Mm. Mm. Yeah, this is so good. Yay! You're always super busy, so I wanted to make you something to help keep up your strength. That's really sweet of you. Watermelon Yana. and melon, Thank I can you. understand. The pumpkin sure. swear it's. Actually, I made like seven cakes, so there's tons of leftovers. Oh. <sighs> the sure. life of an elder sibling continues to be a trying experience. You're telling me. We should play a game to God help me.
Yeah, right? I won't die old. Oh, right. I forgot to tell the dude that I delivered his package. The total package, Lexi. Your delivery is... Thanks. Okay, now we're going to the Forest of Myth. with rage well then I see people Sure is quiet here. Such silence bodes ill. There's trouble on the way. I'm certain of it. You know, a little optimism now and then wouldn't hurt, Vice. Such cheek. Black scrawl. Those who dream. Those who dream? Hold a moment. There is a strange new sensation in my mind. Vice's voice rose in a quizzical way. It is not quizzical. What's going on? The villager's body shuddered as he slowly opened his eyes. Perhaps we should start by asking this man. Uh, who are you? We heard something happen to this village, so we came to see if we could help. If you can speak to me, I must have caught you in my dream. In your dream? The mayor explained. In the past week, a mysterious disease called the Death Dream has spread across the Force of Myth. Those who caught it were cursed to fall asleep and live forever in the world of their own dreams. The village mayor had determined the death dream was spread from person to person by spoken words, but before he could learn more, the disease took him as well. He stared at the mayor, his mouth twitching slightly. Now see here. Are you saying that we have been absorbed into your dream? Well, yes. I think you have. In other words, we've caught the death dream? Weiss exploded with rage. Ridiculous. Preposterous. Completely unfathomable on every conceivable level. I don't even recall falling asleep. That's just how the death dream works. Though polite, the mayor was clearly trying to brush aside the book's remarks. My remarks are not to be brushed aside, fool. Mayor twitched his mouth in an embarrassed grimace, then quickly changed the subject who who just endured seeing and what they had discussed since coming to Something village. there must have caused you to enter my dream. A certain conversation. A specific word. Something. There were simply too many words to consider. Too much random chatter. Too many meaningless conversations. Grimoire Vice does not engage in meaningless conversations. Seem to sting his pride. It does not seem to sting my pride, you bloated gas bag of a narrator. It has demolished it utterly. 
scabbard as if searching for answers in the heavens. I was doing no such thing. Just leave me alone already. The anger created by his harsh words bled over to the Dissinger like a contagion. Wait, did somebody just say contagion? Yes, I believe so. What of it? Well, that villager told us to watch out for contagious words, right? He must have said something right. Some specific combinations of words? What was it? It was about dreaming or something that dreams are... Oh, what the hell was it? A sheep? Blurting out the first thing that popped into his head? The other stared in a moment before... Sh a few more minutes of thought. I remember. Those who dream, he said. That's what he said. I'm sure of it. At this point, the mayor produced a thick sheaf of paper. That sounds right, he said, as a stray sheet of paper fluttered to the ground. My notes also mentioned something about that. I bet it was the last thing you heard before you s fell asleep. Pencil stub tracing lines across a long piece of paper. For the last month, I've done nothing but study the disease we call the death dream. I mean, I'm the mayor, right? It's my job to protect people. But I never expected a couple of outsiders to start entering people's dreams. I applaud the force of will it takes to research a disease in your dreams, but perhaps we should bend your efforts to escaping this place instead of trying to understand it. I've tried to escape. From the very first moment I realized I was locked inside my own dream, I've been looking for a way out, but I don't think it exists. I mean, this is my dream, right? If there was an exit, I'd know about it. He paused for a moment, his unfocused eyes staring at nothing. My village was beautiful, he said to no one in particular, and it was filled with the most wonderful people you could ever hope to meet. But once this disease took hold, things changed. It's like someone took a sponge and soaked all the color out of our lives. I just want us to be whole again. I want us to be free. I won't stop trying till it happens. Wait a second. I didn't nod. Huh. Look, if we can be of any help, just ask. I did not just say that. Silence! Grimoire Vice's face is always confident. Thank you very much. Now see here, Mary, you told us that nothing can exist in this dream without your knowing of it. But yet you seem surprised to see us when we first arrived, yes? Oh my god, you're right, you're right. I had no idea you were coming. The human imagination is a limitless engine and dreams are the fuel. If you can imagine an exit, then it must be so. With your permission, we shall search it out. Thank you. I don't know how I can repay you. Payment's not required. We are as eager as you to be done with this place. Felt as if he could breathe again. He'd almost forgotten what it was like. Good luck, you two. He called up the department forms of Disney and Wise. We're all counting on you. I saw this man once before, he thought. But where? It was earlier when the beauty of the place was still a new thing. He'd been confident he could get in, find the exit, and be home in time for dinner. But the deeper they went, the more the forest closed in around him. The mist made it difficult to see more than a foot in any direction. The moss-covered rocks seemed determined to twist his ankle. More than once, he'd been forced to stay himself on the rough bark of a tree. And his hands now left small trails of blood on everything he touched. Unhindered by either terrain or physical, he spent most of the time to pick up the pace and grumbling about their slow progress. Legless turtles being more adept at navigating the environment, Dissinger snapped. Okay, wise, cram it a second, would you? You don't have to walk. Tried to stretch the knots of his back. How can the stupid force be so big? Every imaginable form of bisque bows that were out it, a volume that rattled his teeth. Wise, what's going on? Might as well have been shouting in a tornado. The forest howled. He removed a hand from his left ear and listened to the creatures of the woods. Zri, 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 zri. Shuck, shuck, shuck. Chicky, chicky, chick, 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 and the insect symphony dimmed another decimal, began to detect patterns in the sound. This isn't rata random, he thought. It's not just white noise, it's something else. They were asking a question. One 
with it is lacking, two with it is ideal, three is dangerous, what is it? I guess so, I mean, it feels sort of forced, but maybe it's the key to getting out of this place. <laughs> it feels forced. One is lacking, two is ideal, three is dangerous. But dangerous with three. Oh, it's a seesaw. Wise mouth flew up, and before he can say anything, the world suddenly shifted. Reen, reen, wa, reen, reen, wa. Shik, shik, ki, shik, shik, ki. Okay. 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 Okay, why is it a... S oh, you share a secret, but if more than two people know it, it's no longer a secret. It's a secret, er, right? Pleased at the passing the test, moved on. Path offered his body relief from the undergrowth, but gave even greater cheer to his mind. As long as they were on the path, their journey had a purpose. So, do not mistake the will of this forest for some happy pet you can suddenly befriend. We have no idea where it leads. Good heavens. I enter through the window, but break new glass. When night falls, I vanish. What am I? He's right, after all. This one is pretty easy. Sunlight. Sunlight filtered through the cheese and inflected off the plume, creating a shimmering rainbow that spanned the entire horizon. In all my years, I've never seen such a sight. Perhaps I've misunderstood the intentions of this place. Hey, look, there's a house over there. That's weird, isn't it? I mean, who built a house out here? Um, um began Dissinger, but before he could get any further, the cloaked man held up a hand and began speaking. I have four legs in the morning, two at noon, but end the night with three. What am I? We wish to engage this man in concentration. Seems to be Yes, I suppose so. Well, at least it's an easy one. It's man. Because he crawls like a baby in the morning of his life. During his life, he stands on two legs. And at the end of his life, he leans on a cane. A theoretical third leg. Correct. With that, the man flung his garment aside. Y you're the mayor. I am not the mayor you know. Now listen to my words. Yeah, it's the Sphinx's riddle. Long ago, I saw a version of you that was not yourself. Oh, sorry. What's that mean? It will make sense in time. At present, I simply congratulate you on cracking the seal of the death dream. Now you must go to the person at the forest entrance. With that, the man turned on his heel and slammed the door behind him. As Dissinger watched, the mist seeped up from the ground and enveloped the conch, erasing it from existence. Yeah. When Dissinger and Wise returned to the forest entrance, they found the mayor. As soon as he caught sight of the duo, he sprang to his feet and scrambled over them. Good gravy, you made it. You actually made it back. His left hand grasped Dissinger and pumped it so fiercely it threatened to dislodge from the socket, while his right seized Weiss by the cover and flung him through, swung him through the air. God, by the heavens, stop shaking me, fool. We have not even told you if we were successful or not. And my bro broadly shook his head. I'm just happy you're alive. I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Withdrew himself from the friends with a slight smile. We broke the Death Dream seal. At least I think we did. Three of them had laid down on the forest ground and fell asleep cracked his head. Okay, hang on a second. This is crazy. Why would we just lay down and go to sleep? 
cease our endless prattle and go to sleep full. Fighting against the rules of this place is futility itself. And the mayor obediently reclined atop the grassy earth. Have you forgotten? It is words that control the death dream, words that allow us to move from place to place. No matter how unnatural they seem, the words are absolute. Therefore, if the words tell us to sleep, then sleep we shall. And once we do, the story will continue. The slowing, this is the first time, the first time that I felt tired since I was imprisoned here. Shook the mayor's shoulder gently. Good news, he said. I think we made it. Oh, wow, said the mayor in an odd voice. We did. I'm back. As if not quite believing the sight before him. You two have no idea how much this means. The death stream was spreading through our village, and I wanted to. Well, I thought I could figure out how to stop it, but I guess that wasn't the case. I must have caught the disease and become trapped. Trying to remember how they worked, then glanced at Dissinger and shrugged. Without a word, the young man reached down and pulled the mayor to his feet. Real life may take some getting used to, said the mayor with a wry smile. You shall really learn in short order, I'm sure. For now, you should return to your home and rest. No, said the mayor, I can't. Some of the villagers are still trapped. I have to save them. This is a holy tree, he explained. It's the guardian of our village's history and memories. Superstition will only make our mission harder. We should not put our faith in the gods. Not the gods, the words. Legend said that our tree is home to a powerful magic known as a sealed verse. Seemed a gold that had been found in the most unexpected of places. I say, this is certainly a stroke of luck. Giving them the third riddle and mysterious words had left them with. I once saw a version of you that was not yourself. What in the world does that mean? Space for a long moment. You know, this is going to sound odd, but I had a feeling I'd see you before, too. Deja vu, right? Anyway, I figure it's just some kind of illusion created by the death dream. Probably doesn't mean anything. There's something wrong about the mayor and his words. And what exactly is going on here? That riddle will prove to be the most difficult oh, one of all. thank you so much. Now I can finally return to a normal life. This is one of the most bizarre diseases I have ever encountered. I know. That's why we have to help the other villagers, no matter what. The dark execution magic. Okay. For a sealed verse, that didn't take much effort. Yes. All a touch too easy, if you ask me. It's almost as if someone was guiding us to this village. Don't overthink advice. This person must be dreaming too. It would appear that way, yeah. Not yet. So this is the tree, and I bet you that'll lead to the final confrontation. Okay. Now that we're done with the text adventure, Let's get these people out of dreams. This person. It's what. Can't say I'm very excited to go back there. Perhaps you should spend less time complaining. Yeah, yeah. Time for the mission. I breathe the air scented with death and resist the urge to laugh, for I know it will sound like the words of a madman. How long have I been in this fresh hell? My box, my prison, it tucked beneath a stairway in a long unused catacomb of some infinite castle. Outside, I hear the sounds of a funeral dirge. Light has no place here. The wind is a forgotten friend. I pray for death to come, but he forsakes me. Time passes and eternity slips by in a single tick of the clock. Someone knocks on my prison. Anyone there? I hear an unfamiliar voice say. Remember directions. My savior. I claw at the door of my jail, embedding thick splinters under my ragged nails. I scream for help. I laugh. I sob. Surely this product of my own line. It cannot be true. 
Help me, for the love of gods, help me. I'm torn out and falling to the floor. As the door slowly creaks open, I have just time to see a silver air boy and a floating book before the light pours in. My eyes unaccustomed to blackness explode with pain and I am forced. Who are you? I ask, shaking my hands, covering my face. How have you come to place? I'm Grimoire Vise. This is Dissinger. We have long been searching for you. Now come, stand. We shall awaken from this nightmare together. The one known as Dissinger extends his hand and pulls me from the cell. Though my eyes are slow to adjust to freedom, my ears as keen as ever, and they recognize the staccato sounds of heavy rain. I never thought to hear that. Would that not be such a terrible storm? Look at your feet. Laughing at my shins. There's so much of it. Yes, and more comes each moment we delay. If we do not make good our escape, we shall all drown. And you know you're weak, but you're only hope to survive. In my head and swore to save my rescuers no matter the cost. The castle catacombs are a maze twisting upon themselves like endless sin trails of a giant. To proceed north. And at the end of the corridor, I find a row of 20 gorgeous canopy beds resting atop a carpet of velvet. Gray matter has been shoved against the side wall, and despite my fever, I think I see the outlines of a door just beyond. It turns to dust and drifts away on the wind. Corpses. I face a mountain of charred and crumbling corpses. Someone has piled these bodies into a tower and set them ablaze. Whether they were alive or dead, I do not know, and sanity will not permit me to consider this further. I cannot be certain that my mind grants me merciful blackness and I find myself opening the door and leaving the most terrible of rooms. South is where I just came from, so we're going to go east. And then we're going to go north because I just came from the east, so west would be to go back. Okay, so south would be back where I came from. Let's head north. Series of paintings, hey Clank. The styles, however, are strange to me, leading me to believe these people had lived long, long ago. Flowers and birds once. Trap for eternity? Okay. Okay, I have to go back. So I already went north. South goes back the way, so let's go east. Red carpet squishes beneath. Those to the feast is a corpse, as are all the guests. An army of foul, wriggling insects have made their home. I take a moment to study my shaking hands and slowly back away from the table. Desperate to lose sight of the abomination, my gaze lands upon the chairs which the dead were seated. Covered in a layer of spikes that run from the seat up the back and down the arms. This explains the color of carpet. I can only pray the unfortunate diners were dead when the meal began. That must have sprung from their mouths. There would be no tomorrow for these unfortunates. This was their last supper. I went east, so we're going to go north. Sunlight trying to break through. How can I thank you? I cry. I surely would have died in there. Your dress? Then you're a woman, madame? I am. 
I suppose that comes as something as surprising as how I existed in on only in the form of words. Thief has set forth to our awakening, but behind us, an awakening corridor, awakening of another kind is taking place. Countless damsels inside their final shroud. anything to say about that uh, hopefully there will be no labyrinth next time we did it I hear that and another victim this work I figured a book like you would be into all this word stuff vice even I have my exceptions. Now let's be off. Okay. Massive sculptures was visible in the distance, their tall forms scraping against the sky. Why Vice and Dissinger had never seen such a sight, and their eyes widened as they tried to take it in. Those buildings must be huge if we can see them from this far away. What do you think, Vice? Consider the answer the sun beat down on them with renewed Perhaps finosity. Perhaps they are some manner of mirage. Under this heat, a mirage or two would hardly be an unexpected sight. Mr. Nodden wiped the, wiped the sweat from his brow, leaving a trail of sand in his place. He thought he'd never been so thirsty. The ancient road on which they walked was black and caked with age. Here and there, thin wisps of the grass pushed through the surface as if to find those who had laid this material over their home. The heat reflecting from the road made Dissinger lightheaded. His feet hurting, he crouched down to rest. I don't know how much longer I can do this. Is someone playing a joke on us or what? The complaining had already begun. Weiss tried not to let his eyes roll too much a joke. No, no joke. This road leads to the city of art. Perhaps the path itself is simply some manner of grand artistic work. You don't sound very sure of yourself there. Perhaps not, but thinking of it in this way might make it easier for you to forbear. Dissinger glanced at Weiss's grinning face, shook his head, and resumed walking. As time passed, Dissinger's feet grew more painful and his throat drier than he thought possible. He tried not to look further than the next step ahead because the bright sunlight made him hesitant to trust his own senses. We are definitely getting closer, said Weiss in an effort to cheer his companion. Yes, this much is certain. Encouraged, Dissinger lifted his gaze. Suddenly, he stopped walking, chose instead to stand in the middle of the road with his mouth and wise open and finger pointing in the distance. Water! He cried. It's water! Water! Preposterous! I don't see any water! Over there, just ahead of us. Look, the sun is reflecting off it. That's a mirage. What in the... There was no water. There was nothing but sand in every direction. Closed his eyes inside as wise floated up behind him and trickled softly. I believe this is known as a mirage. Many a desert traveler has spoken of such things. Dissinger shook his head, bewildered. Suddenly, he pointed off in the distance. Wait, there it is. I just missed it. Look, it's right there. After a few minutes of running, he came to a halt. I could have sworn it was right around here. Confused, he put his hands up to his eyes and rubbed them vigorously. As soon as he stopped, he noticed a blue shimmering pool of clear water just over the next flies. With a shout, he bounded off in search of it. The chase continued for nearly an hour until an exasperated vice finally floated up to Dissinger and struck him in the face with a cover. Get a hold of yourself. There is no water here. There isn't? There is not. And perhaps next time you will listen to me when I tell you as much. However, I suppose this mad chase was not altogether right. Wasted, it seems we have arrived in the city of art. Stretch out before him was a row of impossibly tall sculptures. Their journey was at an end. They're huge. I've never seen anything so big. They reflected light in a thousand directions, while others seemed to be nothing but frames of steel. Some had tall spires on their tops, while others possessed triangular caps. What kind of city is this? Where are the people? Where are the houses? 
Perhaps the land indeed is intended exclusively for artistic use. The debate continued as they made their way through the city. Miracles of artistry everywhere. Great iron crates with wheels sat silent on steel rails. Beautifully carved works with lights of red, amber, and green dangled over every street. As they moved away from the massive sculptures, they found a great array of smaller ones. Some were covered in glass or brick, but many composed of materials they had never before encountered. A sheer variety of colors and styles was staggering. So they found, like, a city with skyscrapers and whatnot. Unable to find a theme or purpose... Or find a theme or purpose to the abstract works, Dissonant Wise eventually fell silent. On the outskirts of the city, they discovered three sculptures in the shape of humans. So they approached them. Finally, I'm getting tired of modern art. <laughs> Except for a single word chiseled in their white arms. One red, alpha, beta, and gamma. They made a brief, beautiful song that took the form of words. Only one form is real, the others are false. Real form will always speak the truth. The false one will only speak lies. With that, the bird departed, and as if on cue, the statue shuddered to life, acquiring color and form as they began to breathe. Hey, look at that. They're alive. The triplets bowed low before disbelief. Please, you have to get me out of this nightmare. I am real. Stop lying, said Beta. He turned to Dissinger and threw his hands in the air. Alpha's a fake, you know. I'm the real word. What a load of crap. Beta is fake. Everyone knows I'm the only real one around here. Turn to their frozen state as silence once again enveloped the city. Would you, when you consider all of the statements, only one of them could be the real thing. Only one form is real, the other one false. The real form will always speak the truth, the false one will only speak lies. have to get me out of this nightmare i am real stop lying alpha's a fake you know i'm the real one what a load of crap beta is fake everyone knows i'm the only real one around here Get me out of this nightmare. I am real. Alpha's fake, you know. I am the real one. Beta is fake. Everyone knows I'm the only real one around here. The real one's Alpha. The other two kept saying that somebody else was fake. They... <sighs> it would seem... Yeah. We'd best act more care... <sighs> this... And another victim. This work certainly is trying. I figured a book like you... Even I... Okay. Those... What? Perhaps... So is the is the correct answer random each time? It's gamma. Okay, so 
Alpha is fake. I'm the real one. What a load of crap. Beta is fake. I'm the real one. You have to get me out of here. I am real. It's beta. If Alpha were telling the truth, Beta and Gamma would be fakes, but in that case, Ga Gamma's claim that Beta is fake would be the truth, even though Gamma is a liar, therefore the theory crumbles. Now let us presume Gamma spoke the truth. That makes Alpha and Beta liars. In this situation, however, Beta is calling Alpha a liar, which would leave us with two statues telling the truth. Finally, let us assume that Beta is telling the truth. So if Alpha and Gamma's lies would make sense, therefore Beta would just be real. Thank you for saving me. See this city before? I don't think so. I mean, it's impossible, right? There's no way I could have ever been to a place like this, but at the same time, I feel like I've seen it before. Deja vu, just like the mayor. <sighs> that was rough. I am positive I... Okay, that's enough. Don't need you getting all weird on me, too. Okay. There. Now all the villagers can wake up, right? Yes. If the mayor's... I think I've had enough wordplay to last a lifetime. Thank you very much. You're telling me. Anyway, let's go... Well, we got it. <laughs> oh, how what here? One ended sword phase. Wow, this looks valuable. Of course, it's apparently a weapon of some renown, but we have little use. Yeah, you're fine. It. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you again for everything. I simply cannot bear another. Well, you can eat when you haven't slept for a couple of days. What was adventuring and all? Bright and talkative. Okay. Something seems off, you know? I don't think we're done here yet. I simply cannot bear. You're my hero, you know that? Oh, come on, don't be shy. It's all right. The mayor even said we're going to build you a statue.
And where's Kaine in all this? Right, because she hates people. Simply cannot bear it. Okay. She's traumatized. We'll see how this ends. And whether that was actually the end of this or if it's just... I suspect so. How was the village? Oh, it was truly magnificent. There are no words, really. <laughs> <laughs> Neat. Let's get back to Popola. She'll probably want to know what's going on in there. Okay, so that was literally it. Okay, there we go. Or drift. <laughs> yeah, you weren't kidding. I can definitely see why the game's an acquired taste. Not everybody has the patience for a text RPG in the middle of their RPG. certainly is a strange illness. Yeah, it was something all right. Even I, with my natural love for words, have no desire to visit that place ever again. You guys did well. You've been making a lot of long trips lately. Are you sure you're not pushing yourself too hard? I'm okay. I can't just sit around all day while Yona's sick, after all. If you say so. 
So, anything I can do for you? Well, I suppose there is one thing I could use a hand with. Have you heard about our plans to repair the canal? The work probably won't happen for a while. But once it's done, we can use the canal for trade and travel and all kinds of useful things. Unfortunately, however, we're... if you're willing to help out... I... No problem. What do you need? Great. So, the man I originally asked to help on this project hasn't shown up for work in a few days. I'm starting to get a little worried. So, maybe you can head over... I'll mark the location of his house on... He always carries a red bag over his shoulder. Got it. Okay. Oh, Popola. Yeah. A canal, is it? Fascinating. If we had a ferry, we could put these days of endlessly running about behind us. Don't you just float everywhere anyway? Do you think I am borne aloft by the winds, lad? It takes stamina to maintain this height. Oh, really? You could at least try to hide the utter dismay, you know. All right, and here we are in seafront. Okay. Um, hey, uh, are you the guy who's supposed to help repair the canal? Popola sent me to... Oh God, it's over. My life is over! Uh, surely you must realize nothing good can come of being involved with this particular endeavor. Easy, Vice. Hey, so, are you alright? What happened? It's my wife. She left home a week ago and hasn't come back. I'm so worried I can't even focus on my work. Oh... Wow, that's terrible. Really? Sure. Er, uh, but do you have any idea? Hmm... Well, she always used to enjoy... All right, then I guess... Thank you. This means the world to me. Oh, and by the way, I've met some odd couples in my day, but none who felt the need to wander about flaunting matching luck. <laughs> you need to get with the times. Coordinated outfits are all the rage. Plus, these bags are special. We bought them for our anniversary. But now, my sweet dope... Okay, okay, just stay calm. We'll go look for her, all right? You sit tight. Christ Almighty. I'm willing to bet that man knows more about his wife absconding than he's letting on. I'm willing to bet he's not married and that he made up a... Hey there, I'm, uh, looking for a woman carrying a red bag. Are you now? Interesting. Did something happen to her? She hasn't been home and her husband's worried. Do you know anything about where she might be? <laughs> Trouble in paradise, is it? Oh, those two never change. Anyway, the short answer is no. She hasn't been around here either. Though come to think of it, she always got on well with the woman over at the tackle shop. Maybe you should try her? I'll do that. Hey, what's the rush? You've got a cute face. Why not sit here and join me for a round? Uh, sorry ma'am, but I'm not old enough to drink.
welcome. Hope you come. Woman at the tackle shop. Her. Hey there. Do you know a woman with a red bag by any chance? A red bag? Oh, sure. Although now that I think about it, I haven't seen her in a while. Right. Last time she came around, she mentioned something about leaving town. But I figured it was just idle talk. Leaving town, huh? All right, thanks for your time. If she has truly left this charming hamlet, finding her may prove most difficult indeed. I just hope she hasn't been attacked by shades or anything. Maybe she's at the chateau off to the right? That's surrounded by spiders? That place. It's not saying I should go here, but why has everything gone to black and white here and the music stopped? Yeah. Shade. Hmm. Something about that shade seems rather odd. Hey, look at this. It is identical to the red satchel carried by the man who sent us on this mad quest. Perhaps it belongs to his spouse. Oh no. Do you think the shades got her? I fear it likely, lad. I sense no other activity in the immediate vicinity. We were too late. Well, this is terrible. What are we supposed However difficult it may be, we've... All right. Okay. Hey, did you find my sweet dumpling? Yeah, she became somebody's snack. We didn't, but we got this off a of shade. Oh no, this, this is her. So our fears were correct. Oh God. <laughs> if I may, my good man, why did your wife leave home in the first place? 
It's because... Because I... I think we should give him some... T oh. Honey, I'm home! Good heavens, you're a wreck! What's wrong? Dumpling! You're not dead! What in the world are you talking about? Oh, oh, you found my bag! Thank you so much! I can't believe I went and dropped it like that. Oh, this is such a relief! <sighs> okay, seriously. What's going on? <laughs> We've... Yeah, it... I see. So, he found a shade with my bag and assumed I'd been attacked and killed? I'm just glad you're safe, Dumpling. But I'm also so sorry. This is all my fault. Oh, if I didn't eat that apple you were saving. Oh, God, I'm such an idiot! Listen, I promise I'll never eat anything of yours again. You just promise never to run away from home again, okay? Gagging. Run away? Have you lost your mind? I just went to visit my parents. Uh -huh. I told you about this. Going to see my family, gone for a week, <laughs> remember? Ugh, are you serious right now? Why don't you ever listen to me? I was gagging. Um, lad, my brilliant intuition suggests we should beat a hasty retreat from these two with all speed. Part of me doesn't even want to. The other part of me has like this morbid curiosity of watching this train wreck in action. Let's let's watch the train wreck. I can't believe you didn't listen to me, and you ate my apple. You are the absolute worst. What? Oh, like you're some perfect angel. You didn't even care enough about our anniversary to hang on to your bag. You, kid, I'm right about this, yeah? If anyone's wrong here, it's my wife, right? Why are you asking again? Wait, you're asking me? Well, you shouldn't have eaten your wife's apple. That's not very nice. But I was hungry, and it was just sitting there. Look, I'm glad you went looking for my wife and all, but that was low, friend. Low. So was eating your wife's apple, but you know, I, I'm not here to judge. People lose things. They, it happens. Her losing the bag. Yeah. Uh-oh. Did I cross a line there? Besides, it's pretty rich to come after me for an apple when you threw away my entire stamp collection. God. Ha! You're damn right I did. And I'd do it again. You are nothing but a hoarding slob. You there. My husband's in the wrong here, isn't he? Uh, pardon, but madam, I... Oh, enough. The both of you are at fault. Now apologize to one another and end this ridiculous display. 